Hello, and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we're looking at the 5th grade concept of data, specifically dot plots and stem and leaf plots, and we'll do it in 5 minutes or less. So you might come across a table like this where you have a lot of information. In this case, we have the height of 21 plants ranging from plant A all the way to plant B, represented in centimeters, but the data is kind of messy. So we're going to first look to see how we could represent this data and make it a little bit easier to read with dot plots. A dot plot takes disorganized data and puts it on a number line so that you can bunch it together and you can look for patterns and trends. So in this case our number line runs from 2 to 3.5 because those are the highest and the lowest values we see up on our data table up at the top. Let's start with 2. I've got a 2 right there on A two right there on D. I'm going to go ahead and mark them out at two right there on P. So it means I have one, two, three plants that had a height of two centimeters. Next I'll look for 2.1. I've got one there on F. I've got one there on M. I've got one there on S. So I'm going to put another three dots right there. One, two, three. When you're making your dot plot you want to make sure your dots are even and they're next to each other so you can look at heights. It's kind of like a bar graph, but not exactly. So we're going to continue. We're going to look for a 2.2. So there's my J. I've got a 2.2 right there, and that is the only one. And you continue until you've taken care of all of your data. And our completed dot plot looks like this. You see 2, 2.1, and 3 had the most. They each had 3. And there were several, like 2.3 and 2.9, that didn't have any values at all. Now let's see what this looks like on a stem and leaf plot. A stem and leaf plot is another way to represent the same data off the table, but instead of using dots on a number line, it uses these two components, a stem, so in this case our stem is going to be a 2 and a 3, because that's going to represent the whole numbers, and then our leaves are going to be the decimals. The biggest part of any stem and leaf plot is the key. You always need to look for the key to make sure you know exactly how to read it. So a 2 in the stem and a 3 in the leaf equals 2 and 3 tenths, or 2.3. So we can take our data, and so we have three 2.0s, or simply two. So to represent them, we're going to put three zeros here in the leaf, because that makes 2.0 or 2. We also have three 2.1s. You notice I'm putting them in order here. So rather than writing a 2.0, 2.0, 2.0, I'm writing the two ones in the stem, and then I'm writing all of the decimals in the leaf. I have a 2.2, and I've got two fours. I've got one five, two sixes, and a seven. Now that's it for my two stems, because there's no 2.8, 2.9. When I go to my 3, I start on my next row of my leaf. I have 3, 3.0s, I've got 2 3.1s, and I've got a 3.2, a 3.3, and a 3.5. So if you couldn't tell from our original data here, and we didn't necessarily have our dot plot, you could look at the stem and leaf plot and see that there are many more numbers that are in the 2.0 to 2.9 than there are in the 3 stem, in the 3.0 to the 3.5. Now it's time for you to try. Take a look at the scores that these 12 students made on a recent exam. Create a dot plot and a stem and leaf plot to represent this data. When you have your answers, go ahead and unpause the video and check your work. So your dot plot is going to look something like this, pretty broad range running from 10.1 to 14, and you can see that of all of them, 10.1 had the most student score, with a 3 student scoring at 10.1. With our dot plot, remember that the key is the most important. So our key is going to show 12 in the stem, and 2 in the leaf is going to equal 12.2. It is okay to have two digits in the stem. So when you fill out your stem and leaf plot, it looks like this. You have five different stems. 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. You can see your biggest stems are 10 and 12. 